here at 105.5 WDHA. His brand new book is called A Mic for All Seasons. Kenny Albert, good morning and welcome to WDHA. Good morning, Jim. How are you? I'm good. Hey, early on, you tell some wonderful stories in the book, uh, first of all. But early on, you talk about getting a tape recorder from your parents as a gift. You go in and you start doing play by play, as a lot of kids did. But when did you really know, yeah, I think this is what I want to do? Yeah, I knew Jim at a pretty young age, growing up in a sportscasting family with my father and uncles. We always had games on in the house. And I received that tape recorder when I was five and, and set up my bedroom uh, like a radio or TV studio with the desk and then the bed in the middle, the TV on the other side and started calling games off the television. And when I was old enough, I would bring it to Madison Square Garden, Shea Stadium. And uh, it's really all that I ever wanted to do. I did a lot of sports writing in high school and college, so I uh, was involved in another side of, of journalism and communications, but always wanted to do play by play. And, and not only that, you played club hockey at NYU as well. So you were active in sports, not just from a broadcasting or a journalistic side either. And never expected to. I had played club hockey in high school, was probably a third line winger. I uh, never expected to ever play at an organized level again. In my freshman year in 1986, I'm coming out of a class and there's a flyer on the wall that a student had put up uh, advertising a meeting. He was starting a club hockey team. And I attended that meeting and joined the club and helped out with some of the administrative duties as well. So uh, four years of club hockey. It was a lot of fun. Scored the first goal for NYU in their history. Didn't score a lot of goals, but I did have the first one. And that'll always be yours, Kenny. Always yours. I never take it away. You've worked with some amazing people over the course of your career, uh, both as you know, ex-players and other uh, media people. Who was the one who you said, I really have to bring my A game today? Definitely Tim McCarver. Um, I've worked with over 225 color analysts, love them all. But the first time I ever worked with Tim McCarver, I had watched him growing up doing Mets games and then Yankees and national games. And he was just so sharp. He was a first guesser. He would predict what would happen before it happened constantly. And I felt more so than with that, with any other analyst that I've worked with that I really had to be on my toes uh, when working with Tim because uh, you never knew what he was going to throw out there and probably worked about 25 to 30 games with him. We became good friends. Uh Unfortunately, he passed away over the last year, but uh, such a great man and and one of the greatest broadcasters of all time. I can honestly say that, you know, watching and listening to Tim McCarver, every time he opened his mouth, I learned something new about the game of baseball. Absolutely. You mentioned, you know, a media family, your dad, your uncles and what have you. Um, obviously, there are advantages. You talk about your dad helping you get an internship at the NHL. But what about the disadvantages to having you know such famous family members as you're trying to make your own way through this industry. Right. There were definite advantages. He did open some doors, uh, the internship you mentioned, but also learned so much by watching him by osmosis, watching the preparation. That was the number one thing that I learned was all of the hard work that goes into each and every broadcast. Disadvantages, I wouldn't really say there are any. Um, you know, there might have been some people uh, when Fox, for example, hired Joe Buck, Tom Brenneman, Kevin Harlan, and I back in 94, who all had fathers in the business. I'm sure there was some chatter about that, but you don't keep the job unless you can get the job done. And I'm so proud to say that it's now year 30 at Fox. I was also fortunate uh, when I was hired by the Baltimore Skipjacks minor league hockey team, my first full-time job in 1990. I was there for two years, wouldn't trade that experience in for anything, then worked three more years in the DC market. So I was able to sort of create and establish my own identity away from home, away from the New York market for those five years. Wound up moving back when I was hired by MSG in 95. But I think uh, those years were a big part of the progression, just getting the reps and uh, doing it away from home. I did minor league baseball on the radio for a year, and there's nothing like a minor league road trip on a bus. Our longest one was 10 hours from Baltimore to Portland, Maine. A lot of the trips were between two and four hours oh. we would go from baltimore our closest rival was hershey pennsylvania that was an hour and a half but we would go up to utica binghamton springfield massachusetts new haven but those overnight 10-hour rides to portland maine those were something but again great memories wouldn't trade it in 
Kenny Albert, his new book, A Mic for All Seasons. He's my guest this morning here at 105.5 WDHA. Kenny, on a typical NFL broadcast, let's throw that one out there. There are three voices. There's you, there's the color analyst, and then we get to see and hear the sideline uh, reporter as well. But behind the scenes, and you tell a ton of great behind the scenes stories, who's the glue to an NFL broadcast? You know, I think it's the the core group that travels together every week, and it's a it's a team effort. Uh, you're right. You only hear or see the three announcers, but we have our producer uh, with our crew. It's Fran Morrison, our director, Brian Lilly, our associate director, Caden Pfeiffer, broadcast associate, Cody Novak, and so many others that travel with us during the week, uh, during the weekend, each and every week. Jonathan Vilma is my analyst. Shannon Spakes, the sideline reporter. Uh, in the booth, we have statistician Dave Chorus, the spotter, Ben Boma. It's really a group effort. It's hard to say that there's one one person who's the glue. And we have the uh, the men and women who travel with us, the camera people, uh, the folks who handle the replays, the graphics. And then there are probably 50 people hired locally every week who are part of that production and technical crew as well. It's an amazing uh, stuff that goes on behind the scenes that a lot of people don't realize. And one of the things, to your credit, you've done four major sports in four days. I would think hockey has to be the most difficult of them because of the pace of the game. Am I correct in that? You know, I get this question all the time and you'll be surprised to hear that to me, hockey is the easiest. Wow. Maybe because I've done it the longest. It's like riding a bike. It's 60 minutes of continuous action. Now I bounce back and forth between radio and TV hockey. Um, radio is so much fun. Uh, the fundamentals growing up as a radio broadcaster um, and then working with Eddie Olchek and Brian Boucher on the TV side uh, called the Stanley Cup final with Eddie and Keith Jones last year. So a tremendous crew with the NHL on TNT. Um, basketball, similar to hockey, but a little slower pace, but the ball's in action for 48 minutes, more stoppages with fouls and the ball out of bounds. Football is the most rhythmic. It's one play and then it's 20 or 25 seconds. Another play, 20 or 25 seconds. Baseball, I only do about 10 games a year, so that's probably the most challenging. There's so much downtime between pitches and batters, although that's been condensed with the pitch clock, which broadcasters are pretty happy with over the last year. I've done some boxing, some track and field, volleyball, um, always great challenges, but enjoy uh, working some of those other sports as well. And you can read all about it in Kenny's new book, A Mike for All Seasons. Follow him on Twitter slash X at Kenny Albert. A Mike for All Seasons. Kenny Albert, thank you for joining us here on WDHA. Best of luck with the book. And the book has its own Instagram account, A Mike for All Seasons. You can follow its travels and my travels there. But uh, thanks, Jim. Really appreciate you having me on.